Hi there, Graham from Penguin Motors here. Right, now the Harris build is out of the way and done and dusted, I can start to bring you in the next one which has been slowly brewing in the background. This is a drag race Pinto. Um, slight, slight departure for me because this is a de dedicated drag race engine as opposed to fast road rally race engine that could go drag racing. So, what's the difference? Well obviously, if you're drag race specific, there's things you can do that you couldn't do on a road engine that's got last 100 thousands of miles or a circuit race engine that runs for hours and hours and hours. So there are things you can do with tolerances um, to help it make it more suitable for drag rather than other disciplines. That said, the owner has said to me just to hang back slightly just in case he decides to put it back on the road. So some of the stuff I'm doing here, I'm erring a bit towards slightly more drag than pure road, but at the end of the day, the engine it will still be plenty road usable if he decides to go that route in the future. So what have we got? Well, perennial 205 block, um, nothing too much to write home on the block other than what I have done, I've made, um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to show you on camera because I can't get the camera to zoom in. Um, we've radiused a couple of the orbos inside the block and right, turn it around. Also put some radiuses on the oil galleries here. Now, uh, why is that? Well, um, at the end of the day, we're, we're after as much power as we can get. And if we can ease the oil flow through the block, we can increase the oil supply, but without having to jack the oil pressure up. And at the end of the day, yes, the oil pump's pumping oil, but the harder it has to work to pump the oil around, the more power it consumes in actually pumping that oil. So if we can ease the oil flow through the system, we might see a small power going. So, so other than that, Core plugs, with, uh, I've drilled and tapped the block to take retaining bolts and washers. And the reason being is that on the real high RPM, really hard work race stuff, block vibrations and that, the core plugs can walk their way out. So the bores themselves, um, we're on a 92 millimeter bore, not a 93, so this is not a 2.1. And we've got a set of Got a set of acrylites from our friends at Burton's, which um, they're the 24 mil. These are 24 mil pin. We are going to have to put valve cutouts in for the can we're going to use. Um, I would have probably gone with smaller pin. However, um, the client already had rods, and what he had is a set of Max Speedy rods. Um, yeah, I mean, having looked at looked at some, this set looks nicer than some others. We're going to run with them. I, to be honest, it probably not my choice for an all-out engine, but I think they'll work all right. So we've got Acrylite pistons, max speed rods, ninety-two millimeter bore. Let's say I stopped at ninety-two because I want to leave more meat in the bore than we get if we went to 93. Um, later on, reasons for that might become more apparent. So that's the block. Um, crankshaft. Crank is a standard two litre crank. I've done a little bit of work just to radius the old ways again about oil flow and it's been reground. Really We've gone fraction under bottom limit on the journal size. Um, if I was going pure, pure, pure drag race, I'd have gone slightly more, but in the back of my mind, clients request that he might return to road at some point. So we stuck a compromise, um, giving it a little extra bearing clearance, but not gone mad. 
And why do we want extra bearing clamps? Well, for a start, when you rev the hell out of them, everything flexes and goes out of shape. Um, but also, you generate more heat the more power you make it work. And bigger bearing clearances allow more oil flow through. More oil flow removes the heat from the, the crank pins and the bearings. So more oil flow is actually good. And if you, if you think about it, if you take a road engine that's done 100,000 miles, what big bearing clearance do you think that's got? That's not got what it came out of the factory with. So they will run quite happily with increased bearing clearances. Not a problem. The crank itself, um, I doubt it. To take a steel flywheel. I've not gone ultra light on a flywheel. Now why haven't I gone ultra light on a flywheel? Because I like a flywheel accelerates better. Yes it does. But there's a downside. Yes, the engine doesn't accelerate quite as hard. However, the slightly heavier flywheel stores more momentum. But my reason for not going ultra light in a flywheel is actually due to do with helping the car launch. Because in a drag race, the start is, is, is you know, the start is everything. You can't get it back. So, um, I want a bit of weight in there to give to give a bit more consistency so the owner can get the hang of it and dial the car in and find the correct starting RPM. If, if, if you're going to get a consistent launch, you've got to work out the RPM you need to launch and you've got to be able to hold it at that specific RPM. So that's, that's part of the plan. I didn't go ultra light for those reasons. Um, if you peruse the forums, you'll find there's massive arguments with all the US drag racers. Some say you've got to go light, some say you've got to go heavy. In reality, I think it's six or one half as on the other. I think ultra light is ultimately slightly, slightly faster, but it's not slightly faster if you're not consistent. So we can always take more weight off the flywheel if we need to later. So, cylinder head, right. This slightly scabby looking thing. Um, it's, it's quite an old head. It's a hand pulled casting. I believe it was originally a Burton Stage 3 head. Um, what can I tell you about it? Well, I've attacked it. I've, bra I've braised a strap on the centre cam tower. Now, if you do that, um, if you do it with braise, you will distort the housing somewhat. So I've got a couple of I've got a modified camshaft I use to line bore it back afterwards. So the cam will actually turn. It wasn't an unleaded head, but it's had a set of inserts fitted. Now on the inlet side, this engine was on uh, group one valves. So as part of an upgrade for the head, we've got ourselves a set of 1.8 REC inlet valves. However, they, they get very, very close to the exhaust. So to that extent, I've made a set of offset guides. Well, in fact, I didn't make a set of offset guides. I took a set of guides from another engine and made them into offset guides for a Pinto. And the idea being just to move the valve over slightly. gives us a little bit, stops us eating so much into this very narrow area here. And it also gives me a bit more work on the short turn. The moving the valve open, the, the cam followers will cope with it. I've done it on other race engines, so that's cool. We've now got cut the inlet seats to suit the bigger valve. Beautiful, beautiful shape, beautiful waist is on these. The valves themselves, we're going with REC Paul Ivy valves and single groove. So unlike the triple groove valves, the single collets 
actually grip the valve itself tight. So you've got a much bigger clamping area and it's a much stronger fit. Now the only downside is that the triple groove allows the valve to rotate in the grooves, which is why they wear out. The single doesn't. So your valve seats won't have the same lifetime, lifespan between being recut, refaced, whatever. But ultimately, this is stronger. So what we've got here is an image from where I, I was part way through um, cutting the uh, valve seats. And there's two things clearly apparent here. You can see the offset in the guide because the guide's thinner at the top edge. You can also see a much wider 60 degree cut towards the top of the valve opening. And that is all the extra material that we've got to play with in the short turn by virtue of moving the valve over. And here's another image where I've done a lot of the blending work to blend in all the seats and uh, remove the excess material from the short turn. I've laid it back quite a bit. This will not favor low lift flow, but that should give us some decent high lift flow. And there we go, just finished a flow test on the head after fitting the offset guides, recutting the seats, etc. Um, we've lost a tiny bit of flow low down, but to be honest, we've got some really big gains up top. We've, we've picked up 10 CFM at the top of the flow range. So yeah, that's really gonna help, help extend its power. Well, that's gonna help it make more power and carry the power on better at high RPM. So that's a bit of a win-win. Right, so here we are, pistons in the hole. Um, I've just popped the pistons on the rods, no circlips, no rings, set of shells, and just nip the ends up, because what I want to do is look at the piston protrusion, because the pistons actually do stick out the top of the block. That's partly because of, that's partly because the rods are actually YB, not Pinto length, so that automatically thrusts the pistons up. Um, I want to check the, the height of the hole, and a point to note is you need to measure in the middle in line with the pin because the pistons do rock in the ball, so that will change the reading. But if you're measuring in a piston, piston in the center, the rock isn't going to affect the reading. So, like I say, they're well and truly out. But I'd rather, to try and keep heat out the piston, I'd rather run the piston slightly down the ball. But bear in mind, we want as much compression as we can get, pretty much. So we're going to run a very thin head gasket. I'd rather run a thin head gasket with a piston down the hole. That's going to be a more reliable combination than a thicker gasket. Um, we're going to run a steel multi-layer gasket. But in my view, the fewer get layers you have, the better the heat dissipation, the less likely the gasket is to fail. So we're going to, I'm going to shoot for 27th hour thin gasket. So, all I'm going to do now is going to check some piston heights. So first off, I'm going to put my gauge on and just check that it's reading zero, which it is, zero's there. So we're going to pop it on the middle of the rear piston and I'm just going to rock the crank around a little. And we are I don't think you see that. We are a fraction under 40 thou out the ball. So I'm going to move her up and I'm going to bring the piston up to check number three. And around, around, around she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Well, we're about 41 thou, so we've got a fraction different now.
Didn't really need to drop the piston, but there we go. Right. We've got a fraction more there. Right, now, let's look at number one. Because number one is an issue. Right. I'll bring number one up. Number one piston is taller than all the rest. Now I've just said number one piston is taller than all the rest. But is it? It just sticks out further out than number one. Well, to be honest, I have proved it's taller than the rest because the difference could be in the block's not machine square. So the deck height is lower at one end of the other. But we can prove it's not because if we take that piston and rod and put it in this end of the engine, we get more protrusion. We get the extra protrusion at the other end. So it's not the deck height. It could be the crank pin. It could be the crank, the crank uh, journals. Big end journals are ground slightly off. So the stroke lengths, lengths are different. Well, it's not because if we put it on different cylinders, we change it on different crank pin, it still comes out the same. And lastly, it could be in the rod. Well. I've tried that piston on different rods. So it's not the rod, it is that piston. So maybe we've got, our, maybe that one piston is out of a different batch or something has gone along, gone wrong along the line. But it's not a biggie, we're gonna deck the piston so I should be able to even it out. But you've got to check, you, ha you know, if you're building a race type engine, you have to check these things. With a cooking 10 to one mile fast roadish engine, with the pistons, 10, 15 tau down the bore, that five tau isn't gonna make much odds. But the race engine, it's got to. And you can buy a damn good quality piston, but it doesn't mean to say you've got a whole match set. Or on that bombshell, don't forget, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell on your way out. I'll catch you in the next video. See you later, guys.